a lot of people are still confused on why we actually need to use IO readers and writers and function arguments instead of just using plain bytes. Right, we're gonna cover this very quick in this video, very important. But before we continue, 50% of my users are still not yet subscribed and you would do me an enormous favor to put this content out into the white. So consider subscribing to the channel, give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comments. And also jump into the Discord community where we are learning programming 24 seven. All right, so without any further ado, let's continue here. So basically, uh, I get this question a lot uh, where I'm making videos about Golang and we have uh, where people say, hey, listen, Anthony, why are we using this IO reader all the time? If we can just put the byte slice in it, why are we doing that? It's annoying. Well, actually very important that we do that. So we have this raw message here and this raw message can come from anywhere, right? We're reading a file. We're requesting some data from an API or something, right? Just raw bytes, okay? And this is a function, very simple. It's gonna handle these raw bytes. And that's where it all goes south because in this case, uh, if you check this function, right? It takes an IO reader. And that's where people say, why do we need to use an IO reader instead of a byte? If we can control this function, it's easier to just put the bytes in it. I understand if you're coming from other languages, mostly that's what you do. But in Golang, we do it a little bit different. And I'm gonna show you why. So in this case, why are we doing that? Right? Why aren't we just putting these plain bytes in it? Well, what can we do if we have bytes? Let's say we're gonna use a standard library because it's amazing in Golang, right? Let's say we're gonna post these bytes to, I don't know, to an endpoint, right? So we're gonna say HTTP and we're gonna say post. Right, uh, and post takes, uh, if you're gonna save this real quick, can we do that? No, let's do that maybe. Yeah, save. So let's GD, let's go to definition. You can see a URL, a content type as a string, and we can see here it already starts, right? A body, which takes in an IO reader, okay? So uh, where are we here? Main here, like that. So let's do something like um, HTTP, look, let's do foo.com, right? A content type, let's make it foo. And now we can just put R in here, right? If we just take bytes in here, right? Like you actually want that, but you think it's good. Well, then we need to make this in a bytes new reader and uh, put the byte in here. That's the same thing, but not really the same. Why? Well, let's reverse. Why not? Because if you're gonna take bytes as in this in this function argument, you're basically going to read all these bytes. Well, this is actually very small, right? raw bytes, it's just a very small byte slice. But if you're gonna read a big file, yeah, you're gonna copy this, this bytes over, right? You're gonna read all these bytes into memory and you don't really want that, right? You wanna read these bytes in chunks. And that's actually what most of these IO readers do, right? IO reader is an interface uh, which just reads and it's going to read in chunks. Of course, if you implement your own reader and you do not, uh, and you read like uh, two gigabytes of memory, yeah, that's your own fault, right? But most of the time, these readers are very well optimized to read in chunks. Uh, this is this is one of the examples. You could also do something like HTTP new request, right? And new request is the same thing. It's a, well, kind of the same thing. It has a method, a URL, and again, the body as an IO reader, right? Um, so it's the same thing, it's gonna be get, and then we're gonna say HTTP uh, foo.com, and again, R, right? What can we also do uh, with the standard library? What can you also do with bytes? Well, you're gonna parse them, you're gonna decode them to JSON, right? A very uh, common use case. So we could do something like uh, JSON, new decoder, right? And what does new decoder take? Let me quickly save this so I can go to definition, right? An IO reader, right? The same thing, R, and then we can actually decode that into a map, for example. Um, of course, it's gonna be a structure, and most of the time it's gonna be a structure, but for the simplicity, we could do something like, uh, it's gonna be a map, string, any, right? Something like that. Yeah, Anthony, but why can't we use JSON Marshall? Well, you could, right? If, you, if this is gonna be a byte, just a byte slice, right? You could do something like JSON Marshall, right? It just takes bytes. Again, if this is a big JSON byte string, you're gonna read that, you're gonna marshal that all in memory. You know what I mean? And with a reader, you will not. That's why, especially if you're using HTTP handlers, which has a request, and on the request there is a body. Well, let's actually inspect that, to be honest. Let's do something like func uh, handle foo. 
uh, we're going to make an HTTP handler here. For example, W is going to be HTTP response writer, uh, just like that. And then it's going to take in a pointer to an HTTP request. Uh, HTTP request here, yeah, just like that, right? Uh, so if we inspect, let me save you real quick. If we inspect a request body, right? It's a read closer, but the read closer, if we actually inspect that, can we do something like this just to make sure I can GD into that and the compiler is satisfied? A read closer is basically also a reader, right? So we can use that read closer, right? To put that into our function here. Uh, where are we? Uh, for example, handle raw bytes, uh, just like that. We're gonna use this IO, uh, this body. Works pretty fine. So that's actually makes this function so gen generic is maybe dynamic. It makes it so generic. It makes it so composable. That's why we take an IO reader instead of plain bytes. So I hope this small video um, shows you why we do that. And it basically makes a logical connection inside your brain uh, for the rest of your Go career. It's very important. A lot of interviewing questions will inv will involve around these small reads and writers. It's important. And um, especially if you're uh, industry active as a Golang engineer, you're going to use that a lot. So it's very important to understand that. Okay, cool. Let me know in the comments, how do you use an IO reader? Uh, does it make sense? Do I need to make more videos? Let me know what you think about that. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in one of my videos or live streams. Peace out.